Welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Ridiculous, and I'm here to answer one of my most frequently asked questions about my remixes, and that is, where do you get your acapellas? And the answer to this question every time is, I don't have an acapella. I did not use an acapella to create my remix. I simply did a little bit of strategic EQing to minimize the music in the song, and then added a whole bunch of my own music on top of it. So essentially what you hear is my music and the vocals from the the song that I remixed. Now, I'm going to use an example of one of my old songs from about two years ago that I think is pretty crappy, and I'll show you what the song sounds like now. As you can see, not the most exciting song. Um, even though I have the vocals on my computer, I'm still going to use the finished song for the sake of this tutorial because you guys are gonna be using the finished versions of the song that you choose to remix to follow along with this tutorial. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a new session with one stereo audio track in it and we're gonna drag our song onto our timeline. The very first thing that you're going to see when you zoom into the absolute beginning of your song is all this silence. It's really not that much. It's way less than a second, but it's still enough to throw off the timing of your remix. So what you're going to want to do is command click right before the very first bit of sound and delete the silence before that and drag it to the very beginning of your project, provided your song starts with the downbeat of the song. Now the next thing that we have to do, and this is the most important part of this entire tu tutorial, is synchronizing the song with the project's tempo. So by default, the tempo of this project is 120. So when we will listen to this song with the metronome on, that little blue dot in the bottom right, we hear that the click track is not synchronized with our song. As you can see, if we zoom in and we can see where the kick drums are, the numbers that measure one beat one and measure four beat one are not lining up with these kick drums. You can see that they're a little bit slow. So that means our tempo is too slow. So we're going to try bumping it up to 130. This is a trial and error process and it always takes time. Um, so 130 is pretty close, but now we have the opposite problem. The click track is following just slightly fast of the song. So let's slow it down just one notch. Again, this is trial and error. And that sounds right so far. Just to be sure, we're gonna go out to the middle of our song and see if it still lines up, which it does. And the end of our song, and it still lines up. Cool. So we now have our song synchronized with our project. The next thing we're gonna do is gonna hit Command F to open up the Flex Time menu. And we're going to change this drop down menu to Polyphonic. What the flex time menu does is it allows us to change the tempo of the song now and it will change the tempo of the music and the tempo of the project at the same time. Now we just changed it from 129 to 150 and then down to 110 and neither 150 nor 110 sounded great. Um, unfortunately you get a lot of digital artifacts when you really try and push the tempo of a song. So it's best to start with a song that's pretty close to a dance music tempo to begin with so that you don't have to really mess up the quality of the audio too bad when you do your tempo adjustments. So the next thing we're gonna do is open up our mixer and we're gonna double click the EQ shortcut and open up a nice blank EQ. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the volume to about negative four, engage a low cut, and we're gonna turn the low cut to about 200. Now I chose 200 out of experience. Male vocals tend to start at about 200 hertz. If you're doing a song with a girl singer, you could probably push that up to about 250. But because this is me singing, I'm a male, we're gonna do 200. Uh, you can move that up and down until you hear the vocals start getting cut out of. But what, this, what you want this to do is cut out all the bass and synths and drums and anything that is low and punchy that falls under this 200 line, which is actually a good chunk of the music. So just simply by doing this, you're gonna be cutting out a lot of the music and you're gonna be essentially left with just the vocals. And another interesting thing that you can do is if you 
play a section of the song that you're remixing where it's just the music and you have your analyzer on, you could see where a lot of the music is falling while the song is playing and you can put little dips in the EQ at those points and that'll help you cut out a lot of the music as well. So a lot of my synths are falling around 260 or 270-ish. So we're just gonna move this up and down and kind of just play it by ear and see what sounds good. So that's really all there is to it. At this point, you can go and start adding all your drums and synths on top of this. And the more music you add on top of it, you'll find the less you really notice the music from the original song in your remix. When you listen to this alone, it still sounds like the song, but once you add all your music on top of it, it'll sound more like you used an acapella track rather than the original song to create your remix. If you're having a hard time finding the tempo of your song, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, that information, if it's a popular song, might be on Google. If you have Virtual DJ or Serato, which are both DJing performance programs you can download for free, you can open up the song in that program and run it through its analyzer, and it'll probably give you the correct beats per minute. Uh, as far as music to add on top of your song, it, again, if you're doing a popular song, you can Google the chords and you'll probably find a guitar or a piano website that shows you the names of the chords and uh, when those chords change. And uh, from there, it, it kind of takes a little bit of understanding of how chords work and what notes you can play within a chord, which is an entire set of lessons on its own that I don't really know enough about it to teach, but there are tons of stuff out there on YouTube teaching basic music theory. Um, so as far as this goes, you're ready to start remixing, and this is what my remixes sound like before I start adding all my music. So just by looking at where the music falls on the EQ and cutting out all the bass all the way up to the very bottom of the vocal will help eliminate the music and help leave you with just the vocals. So have fun remixing. Maybe I'll work some more on this and put out some remixes, put out some tutorials on how I made my way through this remix to share with you guys. Until next time, my name is Ridiculous. Please subscribe, enjoy my remixes. They're all up for free on djridiculous.com and I'll be seeing you guys next time.